my name is Eric Bolin and I'm with sexualrecovery.net. Today we're going to talk about codependency. Codependency is one of those things that we end up talking about but really don't understand. And so there's five core areas. Today we're going to talk about boundaries. Boundaries really stand for ego boundaries. It's the sense that we're going to have our own self, our own space. We have our own thoughts, we have our own feelings, we have our own beliefs, our own conscience, our own will, our own sense of responsibility for our own behavior. And of course, another person has their feelings, their thoughts, their beliefs, their conscience, their will, and their behavior. So putting that together, um, Pia Melody talks about this, that, um, that there's the sense of this is our reality. And so how do I know what is my reality and what is your reality? So when living with an addict, we tend to get sucked into thinking for them, feeling for them, wondering how they're going to do, are they going to choose the right things or not. We also get trapped into this feeling, if I don't do something, will they? And so letting go is very difficult. Let's talk about enmeshment. Enmeshment is when the two people begin to fuse as one. It's almost kind of like dough people, that they start to feel each other's feelings, they start to think for each other, feel for each other, um, act as one's conscience for that other person. We start to feel responsible for their behavior. An important aspect is addiction isn't about you, but it affects you. And so that's why I really highly recommend some 12-step programs like Codependency Anonymous, um, Al-Anon, because it really helps you focus on what your needs are, what your standards are, what your limits are, and doing it in a loving and um, helpful and effective sort of way. I know a lot of people end up who go to Al-Anon and their spouse actually starts to get recovery. This isn't, our motive shouldn't be though, I'm going to go to try to make them because that would still be codependent. But if I go and unhook, in fact, detach, that would be the step in the right direction. We might start with thinking about, you know, I've got to turn this over. It's as if the addict sticks their hand in a fire, and then I'm the one who feels the pain from it. Well, if I'm feeling their feelings for them, they won't. It often can look like this, that as the pressure goes down, um, that the other person feels it so much and so this re person represses everything while the other person feels it and so the word emotion comes from the same root as motivate and that's why the most emotional one is so motivated for that person to get well and that's why the addict who's repressing their feelings is not um, encouraged to get well so what do we do well we want to balance this out very much like a teeter-totter Another way to look at this is that um, like each person has their own boundary space and when this person feels the feelings for that other person, they won't feel it and they won't get um, better um, because that person is kind of feeling it for them or um, acting as their conscience. There's enmeshment. One begins to feel too much emotion and the other one doesn't feel enough emotion that um, one starts to feel like 200% conscience while the other person feels Zippo. And so um, it's really important to just feel your conscience about your behaviors, about what it is that you want. Um, just think your own thoughts versus by thinking for them or mind reading. It's very easy to do with addiction.